Welcome to another tutorial video from Viznos. Okay, in this one we're going to be talking about Fraction Wall. So you can find these activities at the Viznos website. So just do a Google search, you'll find the site. Or you can look at the Chrome Web Store if you're using Chrome and you can install the actual application. And the new standalone application has the advantage that you'll be able to work offline as well. So without an internet connection. So let's go through the basics of what a Fraction Wall is. But before we do that, just some general things about the interface of Viznos and how all the activities work. So the first thing to note is when you move over a control, you'll see in this top bar here, there's a description of what the control does. So if I move over this R, it says click to create a randomized wall. So if I click that, you get a randomized fraction wall. Or this off, to click to turn off all the bricks. So I'll click that and there you go. Um, also, as well as the mouse overs to show you here, we also have some extra information. If I click this I icon here, information comes up on how to use the wall. So this gives you full instructions. And you'll notice some of the text is in blue. When you click these, it highlights the control that's actually being talked about. So for example here, least common multiple, the blue part here, and it highlights as least common multiple or lowest common multiple as it's called some places. So let's uh, close that, and you can also access a video by clicking this icon. And this is the previous tutorial video for the older wall. So I'll close that. Uh, and finally, if you click the X, typical behavior, we close the application, and this will take you somewhere else. In this case, it will be back to the main menu. So let's proceed uh, by starting to talk about what a fraction wall is. Uh, you can select different walls from here, so this is the mixed wall, which is the default wall when we start off. If I click here, we have one hole because one layer in a fraction wall represents one hole. Below that, the wall is split into two. So each one is one half. Two halves gives you a total of one. Next one, quarters. So you'll notice as these bricks go on or off, as I click them, the total here updates. And as you can see here, we have two twelfths, and it's just written here as two twelfths. We can move to the next uh, control here, which changes the type of total displayed in this part. So let's do that. So we can either show nothing. So now you're just free to use the wall as it is, and you can ask, you know, what's actually being represented. Or you can use simplified fraction. So now in the case of the two twelfths, we see that that has been simplified down to 1 over 6, or 3 twelfths gives you 1 quarter. And also, obviously, in a classroom, you might want to show this information, so you can hide all of these boxes and then reveal them by clicking them one at a time. Or if you want to hide one particular one, click it again and it hides. So this could be useful with the random wall, which we saw a little bit earlier. So if I click that, let's hide them all, create a random wall. So you could ask the children in your class, uh, we have four over six there, what would that be cancelled down to? And there you have the answer, two thirds. Two fifths, can that be cancelled down to anything? No. What's this one? One, two, three, four, five tenths. Hopefully they'll spot, that's one half. And if you wanted to be clear about that, we can use this control here, which aligns all the wall, the on parts, to the left. So now it's a little bit easier to see why these five tenths equal one half. So the other parts of the uh, display you can use are percentage. So now you can see tenths in this part, twentieths in this part, and the totals again are shown, but this time percentages. You can also show decimals and so on. So let's see, what else have we seen? This control turns on the whole wall. This control turns the whole wall off. We've seen the randomized wall, and we've seen how after you've randomized the wall, you can align the bricks to the left. Okay, so let's look at the equivalence mode. So as you can see, this button looks a little bit different. It's got an X in it to mean it's turned off. So when you do this, you can turn it on and you'll see a tick, meaning it's on. So what does the equivalence mode mean? It means when I click a layer, all the other layers that can match that fraction will show up lit as well. 
So if I click a half here on the mix wall, we'll see that it's equal to two quarters, four eighths, three over six, six over 12. And you can also do other fractions if I click five eighths. It's not possible to make five eighths from any of these other fractions. But if I do six eighths, then you can see it's equal to three quarters or nine twelfths. Um, an interesting teaching point actually is if we go to the primes wall in equivalence mode, I'll never be able to click anything which will make a matchup on the other layers. So obviously there's a very good teaching point there unless you make a hole which lights up the whole wall. Okay, we've also got the next control here then, which is the LCM, or least common multiple, or lowest common multiple, and it's got other names depending on where you're based. So let's have a look at, um, let's slide up one third and one fifth. Now the least common multiple, when I press this, will create a new wall, and the new layer will be able to represent one fifth and one third. So that's done all automatically for you. Let's do the equivalent again. So if I click for one third, you'll see it's equal to 5 over 15. If I click 1 fifth, you'll see it's equal to 3 over 15. So it's quite a useful feature for um, showing equivalent fractions. And obviously that's a key part when you go on to how to add fractions or subtract fractions. Right, so let's um, finally look at the um, advanced controls. So you've seen that the uh, least common multiple creates a new wall. There's a couple of other walls you can create automatically. So if I adjust these sliders now, you'll see the fraction changes. So you can make any fraction you want. If you want to add a layer, a new layer will appear, which is basically a clone of this one here. Add another layer. So we can compare lots of different fractions. But more interesting maybe these automatic modes. So up here we've got 0 over 24. If I click automatic, what will happen to this 24 is it will be divided down by the prime factors in order. So the first prime factor of 24 is 2, so that will be divided by 2 to get 12. You can see that there. 2 can divide into 12 again to give you 6, 2 into 6 to give you 3, and so on. So it's kind of a reverse to how the walls were represented before. So that's the automatic mode. So if I go up to 100, press automatic, you'll see it just gets divided again down 50, 25, 5, and so on. So that's the prime factors being divided. Automatic wall 2 divides by all the factors of the wall. So again, with the equivalence mode, it works well. You can see what parts will work, what parts are equivalent. And you can hide the advanced controls by clicking that toggle button again. Uh, one last thing then to look at is this final control down here. Uh, you'll notice its default setting is match wall. So here we have one quarter and you show one quarter there. But maybe you don't want to show fractions and fractions. Maybe you want to show fractions and percentages. So we can do that. So now, close that. On the wall we have fractions and in the totals we have percentages. So again, working with the class, a good idea would be hide it, create a random wall, Go through, what's that one? 100%. Next one, half, 50%. Two quarters, 50% again. Okay, no, not the best of random walls there, but you get the point. So we could do it with a mixed wall. Hide these, create random, compare the percentages. So three quarters, 75%. 62.5, obviously some of them have to be rounded. But it's a very good way to get the class to be familiar with the conversions between fractions, percentages, or indeed, if you wanted to show decimals, you could do that too. So there's 0.75 instead. Okay, so that's all for this uh, particular video. Uh, remember, there are plenty of other activities at Biznos, and there are other tutorial videos to go along with them. Thanks for watching.